After making more than 50 episodes of Iowa Ingredient, we are still amazed by the incredible variety of foods we can produce here in our beautiful state. We're also amazed by the incredible variety of ways we can prepare and eat those foods. But sometimes when you're busy and on the go, you don't have time to sit down and prepare an Iowa ingredient rich meal from scratch. So how about a smoothie? I'm Charity Nevy. On this episode of Iowa Ingredient, we're going to scope out smoothies. Some of our most creative chefs will craft some quick, easy, and Iowa ingredient rich smoothies for those of us who like to consume our fruit and veggies on the run. Oh, wow. All that and more coming up next on this special smoothie episode of Iowa Ingredient. Funding for Iowa Ingredient has been provided by a grant from the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust. Chef Lisa Laval of Trellis Cafe and Chef Michael Laval of the Des Moines Embassy Club. For more than 100 years, the Des Moines Embassy Club has provided a place to dine, celebrate, and do business. Located in downtown Des Moines and in West Des Moines, details are at embassyclub.com. Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. We all know that it's important to eat fresh fruits and vegetables every day, but sometimes finding the time to prepare that well-balanced meal is a real battle. Fortunately, there is a creative option available, smoothies. With a blender and some imagination, you can find a way to help fresh fruits and vegetables live together in culinary harmony. And we've asked some of Iowa's most innovative chefs to share their smoothie recipes with us. One of the stipulations we gave our chefs for this special smoothie episode was to include any and as many Iowa ingredients as they could, which opened up acres of possibilities, including, of course, berries. Look how red they are. <laughs> we have plenty of you pick berry options available to us during the summer. And as most of our chefs will illustrate in this episode, Freezing those berries allows us to enjoy smoothies long after berry picking season is over. Even the aronia berry, with its somewhat sour taste, can find a happy and tasty place in an Iowa ingredient smoothie. And I'm here with Chef Tom Scold of Restoration in Decorah, and you have brought a healthy and delicious Iowa ingredient smoothie Iowa recipe ingredient for us. Smoothie. Uh, absolutely, all right here. Um, what have you got? I've got three different berries, strawberries, raspberries, and aronia berries. For those of us who don't know them, um, they're called a superfood. People, people stick that label on them. Um, they are three times the antioxidant properties of blueberries. Um, they're a little assertive on their own. Yes, no, they're, nothing, they have a strong no, flavor. Nothing, nothing you probably choose to eat out of hand, but mixed down, they, they give this a great color, great flavor, and of course, all those, all those immune boosters and, and all that stuff that we've, we've come to appreciate. Wonderful, and it doesn't look like you're gonna put much sweetness in it, although this is... A quarter cup of honey. Honey, nice. A little mint for, right. for cooling, and uh, some skim milk and uh, Greek yogurt. And I noticed that all the berries are frozen. Of course, you can make them with fresh berries, but is it easier to make a good sure. smoothie with frozen berries? Sure, it, it, it sets up nice and nice and thick, and it's cold to drink. So All right. it's a, a step that you want to take or, or just use frozen. All right, shall we mix it up? Okay. Strawberries. Strawberries. Raspberries. Great. Our aronias. Some skim milk there. Skim milk. Greek yogurt. 
Wonderful. We'll give it a nice creaminess. And that's fresh mint. Fresh mint. And then the honey. That took some torque, but we got it done, right? That looks great. What a beautiful color. Thank you, Aronia Berries. That's wonderful. And we, got, we need to try this. Yes. Mm. That is really good. Oh, the mint mm. just really sets it off. Yep. That's good. fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Most people prefer their smoothies sweet, which naturally means that fruits are included. But to get even more nutrition, you can throw in some leafy vegetables, like spinach. Spinach is a veggie that can handle sweet complementary flavors quite well. You've had sweet salad dressing on a spinach salad, right? It's delicious. Kale is another vitamin-packed ingredient that Iowa farmers like to grow for their communities. It can kick a smoothie up a significant notch in nutrition. Even if you don't like kale, when the blender does its job and disguises the texture and sometimes even the flavor of kale amidst all the other smoothie ingredients, it's an effective way to drink your vegetables. I'm here in the kitchen with Katie Meyer of the Trumpet Blossom Cafe in Iowa City, and we are going to make a smoothie. And you're definitely the first chef to bring us pawpaws to put in a smoothie. I Tell me about I might this. Be. Sure. So pawpaws, uh, according to the internet, are uh, the largest edible fruit that's indigenous to the United States. So, and they're native to Iowa. They grow here, and then pretty much all east of us, all the way to the coast. And apparently we've been uh, harvesting them. They grow wild, or they did originally um, since colonial times. Wow. So that's pretty cool. And they are seeing maybe a little more respect than they've gotten in the past, and some people are starting to cultivate them, although they're hard, yes. hard to come by. But they're really unusual fruit. Can mm -hmm. you, uh, we see the puree yes. here. Or yeah. This had been frozen so and then kind of yeah. mushed up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, um, they don't look like anything else that we grow here in the Midwest. You would think that they were from somewhere tropical. They kind of look like a mango on the outside. They're really soft. They have a pretty short shelf life um, and they bruise kind of easily. So they're not something that is, um, you know, in the grocery store right mm -hmm. now, but hopefully will be uh, soon. Because and they do freeze well. They do, yes. Yeah. So I just, um, you know, sliced it open, took the seeds out, took the flesh out, froze it, and then thawed it, and this is what it looks like. It's stirred up a little bit. And it kind of tastes like a tropical fruit, too, it does. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's got, kind of tastes a little like a mango, a little bit like a banana, yeah. All right, and very smooth. And what else do we have for the smoothie? So we also then have soy milk, and we have some apple cider. So these are all Iowa ingredients, which I'm super excited wow, about. Wow, great. Uh, and then we have kale and maple syrup and aronia berry. So an aronia berry puree there? Yeah, mm -hmm. so they have a ton of seeds. Uh, so these are uh, local, and I uh, cooked them down, actually, and then strained a lot of the seeds out. OK. Mm -hmm. Well, let's put this smoothie together and right. some local ice yes. also to local give it just a little. Ice. From the other room. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll do the soy milk. So this is the paw paw. Right. And kale's kind of the hot smoothie ingredient. Sure. Well, it's a days. great way to get your daily dose of kale is in a smoothie. <laughs> if you get tired of kale salads yeah. and kale chips. And, right. Yeah. Right. Well, and this is great because the kale's raw, so you yeah. preserve all of the goodness, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So now we'll go. So that 
should pretty much do it. The kale, you're still gonna have little pieces of kale, which is fine, and nothing that we had, besides the ice was frozen. You know, sometimes when you make smoothies, you have frozen banana right. or something. So this blends pretty well, um, and right. the pawpaw is soft too. So Pour it into our cups. Give it a try. All right. So you haven't entirely hidden the kale from my children, but. No, I, you can tell that maybe, <laughs> what, it's green? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm sure it will be delicious. <laughs> All right, and I've got some straws back in Excellent. here so we can taste. All right, thank you. Mm. Oh, that pawpaw flavor is so good, and with the yeah. maple syrup and the cider. Yes. And I don't taste the kale at all. Good. <laughs> <laughs> or not good. I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. This is great. Thank you. Chef Katie, thank you so much. Thank you. When rhubarb starts to make its springtime appearance in backyards and gardens all over the state, folks start trying to think of new ways to eat it. This year, you might want to try it in a smoothie. The tartness of rhubarb means it can pair nicely with sweet berries or honey. And besides having the satisfaction of knowing you're using rhubarb in a new way, you're also getting important nutrients like fiber, vitamin C, vitamin K, potassium, and many others. So, take a fresh look at that prolific rhubarb plant in your garden and harvest a stalk or two for a smoothie. I'm here with Chef Walter Jenke from the Northside Cafe in Winterset, and you have an early summer smoothie, right? That's right. Uh, rhubarb season in Winterset. Everybody comes out looking for, we do a, a great rhubarb crisp, and we've done a rhubarb shake this year, and I thought it would be exciting to do a rhubarb smoothie. That sounds very exciting to me. So, so. It, it looks like you have transformed your rhubarb. What did right. you do? It starts in the stalks, then we chop it up, and then we add about three quarters of a cup of sugar to four cups of this rhubarb diced. Mm -hmm. And after it's, even though it's diced pretty chunky, it really shrinks and, and goes mushy. Yeah. And just a, a little bit of orange juice in here. All right. And so we'll, we'll drop all the ingredients in and turn on the machine. All right, so rhubarb compote, right. and now, then... Yeah, and this is just the yogurt. All right. And uh, it's about a cup of that. And then for the strawberries, you can go with fresh strawberries. We happened to use Picofin's strawberry ice cream at the cafe, and when it was sitting there next to the rhubarb, somebody thought, we did try a plain rhubarb shake, and then everybody who tried it next to this one said, mm, it needs a strawberry, that's the way to do it. Let's see if we can make this smooth. All right. And that's all it takes. All right. Got a glass? Yes, I do. All right. All right. Beautiful. I think I need to fill it all the way up because that just is too good. All right. All right. Oh, it smells amazing. And we've got spoons here. Let's give it a try. You first. Right. Oh, my goodness. I think we could do that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> if you want it tangier, just add more rhubarb. <laughs> I will. Chef Walter, thank you so much. Thank you, Charity. there is an age-old ingredient that works fabulously in smoothies. Honey. It's natural, it's sweet, and its smooth texture makes a blended drink feel just right. We would be remiss if we didn't take a moment to recognize the hard-working honeybee. To create one pound of honey, an industrious hive of bees visits nearly two million flowers. They fly a combined total of 55,000 miles to get the job done. It's kind of amazing that they can what they can do what they can do. It's basically equivalent of me running 
70, 80 miles, throwing somebody on my back that's about 80% of my weight and running back and repeating that after day after day after day. Thank you honeybees and beekeepers for giving us a versatile and very smoothie worthy ingredient. Now I'm in the kitchen with Melissa Friedhoff of Ross's Restaurant in Bettendorf with her smoothie recipe. Hello, Melissa. Hello. <laughs> and you have an ingredient on the table that I have never seen put in a smoothie before. You have cocoa. Yes, we're going to um, have a healthy with a little bit of chocolate. Um, and berries and chocolate are just so phenomenal together. Yes, two great so, tastes, for and sure. And we also get a little of antioxidant, extra antioxidant in our cocoa because it's a good quality dark all chocolate. Right. All right, so, so you've got frozen berries. And yes. frozen's important because that gives us yes. a little bit of the iciness. Right. Uh, coconut, is that unsweetened, just raw unsweetened coconut? Unsweetened coconut, yes. yes. All right, yogurts. Yes. Honey, mm -hmm. I recognize these things. <laughs> a, a little bit of milk, is it skim, 2%? What kind um, of milk I use do you 2%, use? 2%, but you can use coconut milk, you can use almond milk, whatever whatever you have at home is will work. Cashew All right. milk. All right. <laughs> and last but not least, we've got flaxseed here. Uh, why do you want to put flaxseed in? Um, I like to, to put a little flaxseed in. It adds some protein, and also you're getting some good omega-3s, which is, which is very important uh, All right. for us. I feel like I'm going to be supercharged after you'll be, this movie. You'll be strong. <laughs> All right, let's put it together. Okay, great. Let's start with our berries, about a cup of berries there. All right, and the more frozen, the better, really, with the berries. Yeah, right? and fresh if you're out going of the to freezer. use fresh, uh, you certainly can, um, but you want to add a couple ice cubes okay. if you do that. So. Add our yogurt in there. Well, and it's just so convenient to have frozen berries yeah, in and the freezer and all right. year round. And I get them um, seasonally, and then I, I just put them in Ziplocs in my freezer, and they, they keep quite well. So, nice. yeah. We always wait until we haven't eaten them. They're just about to go bad, and then we're like, oh, we'll freeze them. <laughs> <laughs> right? And they'll be great in smoothies. <laughs> all right. We'll add a little of our milk and see how thick it is. And our flaxseed. Yeah, a couple of tablespoons there. And that has about three grams of protein in it. So, and our cocoa. And you're releasing and the chop. aroma of the cocoa. Yes. That smells good. It is good. All right. Okay. And of course, it looks like a berry smoothie, but I actually can see the, the cocoa yeah, color in there. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell a little bit. Yeah, it, it just gives it that, that good flavor. Wonderful. <laughs> well, let's taste these. Perfect. Cheers. <laughs> oh, wow. And I can taste the cocoa. That's just a lovely chocolatey mm -hmm. berry smoothie. That's wonderful. It is, it is. And the flaxseed, I don't taste, which is a great thing. Good, good, good. <laughs> well, very good. <laughs> Melissa, thank you so much. Thank you. Most of the smoothie ingredients our chefs are using on this special smoothie episode are fruits or veggies you would naturally picture as being perfect recipe elements. But there's one that might surprise you. Lavender. Lavender grows very successfully in the Luss Hills soil in western Iowa. It's an herb that can be used to create soaps and other beauty products, but it can also be eaten. It's beautiful, smells amazing, and reminds Chef David Borussio of his homeland. In Provence, France, lavender fields abound, a truly beautiful sight in summertime. Lavender, it's an inspirational Iowa ingredient. I'm here in the kitchen with Chef David Barusio of Baru 66 and other restaurants in Des Moines. And you have, this is a non-dairy smoothie recipe. Correct. And why did you decide to go with a non-dairy smoothie? Because um, uh, I like it and, and also because a lot of people, you know, got into the trend on, on be dairy free mm -hmm. and because it's, you know, a smoothie is a, should be a refreshing 
And what are you going to put in it? So today we're going to use uh, banana, honey, touch of lavender, nice. blueberry, and strawberry. And as you can see, there is no ice cream, there is no ice. Right. So the way we're going to chill our smoothie, I choose uh, to have fro organic frozen fruit. And the way I do it at home in the, in the morning is uh, I have always, uh, you know, frozen fruit lasts a long time. Mm -hmm. So you can just pop, do it, and it's chilled right away and you're ready to go because time is of the essence <laughs> specifically in the morning. So. Right. So that's what uh, we're going to do. And we're going to put a little bit of uh, banana who is going to act uh, a little bit as the, the, you know, the thickener and our right. the, kind of our protein in there. I always feel like with a banana in it, the smoothie just feels more filling. Yes, correct. And then we'll use almond, almond milk as a liquid. OK, well, let's we put it together. There you go. Perfect, thank you. So, bananas. Mm -hmm. So, if you notice, there is no sugar also. Mm -hmm. So, I have um, beautiful uh, Iowa honey. I'm going to put it in there. Wonderful. Just a teaspoon, you know. I mean, you can put uh, as much as you like. I, I don't like to eat too sweet, so that would be perfect. And our fruits. And there's a lot of sweetness there, too. Yes. Frozen strawberry, frozen, frozen blueberries. And again, you know, it's it's probably better than you know putting ice cream or putting a, you know a ice cube because no one wants to drink a smoothie that is hot, you know, room temperature. So mm -hmm. I I really think that the frozen fruit option is a great convenience for uh, time and you know also for the practical side of it. Right, right. So we're gonna start blending that. I'm gonna put a, a little bit of the. A little bit of the uh, almond milk, and we can always put more. There you go. So nicely and gently, perfect. So it's got uh, already the banana and the, it makes it kind of a, like a like an ice cream nearly. Yeah. But much better for you. And much better for you. Add a little bit of the and you know I'm always on the run and I generally I take breakfast in my car. So I try to do a smoothie that is ready to go and I can be zipped out of a straw while I'm driving. So I make mine a little bit more liquid. But it's nice and cold. This point, just a, you know, a couple of lavender seeds, just a little bit. Voila. Wonderful. And with all that flavor, you think we'll be able to taste the lavender? Absolutely. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on the top. I love this is the little personal fancy touch, a little right. bit of fresh mint. Right, you might not do that in the morning while you're no, rushing I out the door. No, I definitely don't. <laughs> Put it make it awfully pretty. It does. It's a great, uh, great patio drink also. Yeah. All right, time to give it a try. Santé. Mm. It's wonderful. Wow. And I can taste the lavender. You can, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Chef David, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you. That's it for this special episode. We hope you're feeling inspired to try your fruits and veggies smoothie style. I'm Charity Nebby. See you next time for more culinary creativity on Iowa Ingredient.
As you can probably guess, the Iowa Ingredients staff appreciates everything about the food scene in Iowa. And in 2016 and early 2017, we visited the restaurants, farms, and other locations showcased on this program. But circumstances can change, so we encourage you to check ahead if you're planning a visit of your own. We hope you get the chance to get out there and enjoy Iowa's fabulous food experiences for yourself. Funding for Iowa Ingredient has been provided by a grant from the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust, Chef Lisa Laval of Trellis Cafe and Chef Michael Laval of the Des Moines Embassy Club. For more than 100 years, the Des Moines Embassy Club has provided a place to dine, celebrate, and do business. Located in downtown Des Moines and in West Des Moines, details are at embassyclub.com. Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation.